One elf has the important job of loading all of the rucksacks with supplies for the jungle journey. Unfortunately, that elf didn't quite follow the packing instructions and so a few items now need to be rearranged. Each rucksack has two large compartments. All items of a given type are meant to go into exactly one of the two compartments. The elf that did the packing failed to follow this rule for exactly one item per rucksack. The elves have made a list of all of the items currently in each rucksack, but they need your help finding the errors. To help prioritize item rearrangement, each item that needs to be moved has a priority. First, you will need to identify the item that needs to be moved within each rucksack. Second, you will need to find the sum of all of the priorities of the items that need to be moved. Are you up to the task? Happy Saturday, everybody. Or if you're watching in the future, happy whatever day it happens to be. We are back here doing day three of the Advent of Code 2022 rucksack reorganization as you just heard there's been a mishap in the rucksack item organization we have an elf who has misplaced items we have rucksacks they have two compartments a left side and a right side and they should not have similar items in between the two so the left side should only contain one type of item and nothing no items in that left side should also be in that right side so it needs to be two distinct, distinct rucksack sets. So we're we're dealing in mathematics. This is a, a thing called a set. You can think of the left side as being a set, and the right side of being a set. And when you take the intersection, so if you're looking at the Venn diagram, if you take the intersection of the two, the middle should not have anything in it. So we're going to treat this as an intersection problem. So what do we have to do? Let's look at our inputs here. We're getting rows of rucksack inventory. So each character represents an item in our rucksack. And it's saying that it's going to be an even number of items. We can split them evenly between a left side and a right side. So we know for sure that there's going to be an even number. and We can take the left side and the right side. We need to split it into two compartments. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get something that can take in a string, get us our left side, get us our right side. The first methods we're gonna write, we're gonna write a get first compartment, get second compartment. It's gonna take that string, break it out, and give us our left and right sides. Once we have that, we need to find, we need to find the intersection where these two things overlap, and that's gonna tell us in the middle, if we do an intersection, it's gonna tell us what is it is matching between the two. One of these things, sh they shouldn't be in either side. So we're going to write an intersection method that takes in each of our, our compartments, tells us what's the same between them. Then we need to figure out the priority on it. So down here, every item has a priority. So we're going to have another method, get priority, that goes in and it tells us that value. And then once we have all that, our program, we just iterate through, we loop through all of these things. We loop through each rucksack, find that value, pull out each compartment, find the intersection, get the value, sum them up and report that value. So that's the high level overview. Okay, so let's look at the first part. We wanna be able to get each compartment. Let's develop a strategy for doing that. We know that each rucksack has an even number of items stuffed into it and each compartment has exactly half. So using that information, we know we can split the string into two using a substring. You need some help with that for your specific language. It's worth looking up, but you wanna do a substring that is exactly half the length of the string where you take the first half and then the second half. For my solution, I'm gonna write two methods. One, get first compartment, and the second one's get second compartment. Both will take in a string as a parameter which will be the entire rucksack, and then it will return a substring, which is either the first half or the second half. At this point, you should have 
a way to extract both the left and right components from your sack. I've written two methods, get first and get second. And then I've also written a little test here to give myself confidence that they're doing what I would like them to do. So down here in my console, I've just run my program. I have a little test, get first and get second, where I pass in a string. The first string I pass in is A, B, C, D. And the first half is A, B, C, D. And then the second half is E, F, G, H. And I also pass in this string dead beef, where the first half should be dead and the second half should be beef. All right. So if you haven't written a test for yourself to give yourself confidence that it's working, go ahead and pause, do that. And I'm going to show you my solution. So here's my program so far. Up at the top, you'll see here I have my test. Little simple test I've run just to give myself confidence that things are working. And then I have my two methods, get first and get second. And in C-sharp, this is relatively simple. I'm just taking that input string, calling substring, and I'm saying for the first half, I say start at index zero. That's the very first letter. And then the length of the new substring should be half the length of the original sack. So the substring in C sharp says, give me the first index and then the length that you want for the substring. Your programming language might might differ. It might take in a starting index and an end index. So you might have to do a little bit more work. And then in the get second, I actually start at the halfway point. And then again, just go and I want my string to be half the length. So for my get second, I start halfway through and then I get the same length as the first one. So it should be exactly half. We know that all of our sacks have an even number, so we don't have to do anything special to say, well, what about odd numbered sacks? How should I split that? Which side should get the most? We don't have to worry about that. So now that we're able to separate these into two comp compartments, we have the first half and the second half, we need to be able to check the intersection and find, we know that everyone is gonna have exactly one character in there that is identical and all the others should be unique. So we're gonna find the intersection of these two and return that. So your, your language might have some intersection functionality built in. You might have to write a loop that finds it on its own, but your goal here is to write a method that gets you back the intersection of these two strings. At this point, you should have a method or function that is going to allow you to find the intersection between the two compartments. So I've written mine to be a find intersection that takes in two strings, the first compartment and the second compartment, returns a single character that is the intersection that it found. And then I've written a test here using our sample input. So they gave us some sample examples to verify. And I've gone through and done that here. So I have this input, the output of that should be P, the output of this one should be L, E, lowercase v, t, and s. And so I've gone through and I've verified that my solution works for the inputs that were given. So this gives me some confidence that it's gonna work on a bigger input. If you haven't written a test yet like this, I highly recommend doing it. Go ahead and pause and then I'm gonna show you my solution. In C Sharp, this happens to be quite easy have an intersection function built right into string for us so we can actually take the intersection of two strings and it's going to give us back a set of matching characters we know that the strings that we're getting the compartments is going to be exactly one match in them so i also am using this first method which says take the first thing out of this set we know there's exactly one thing so this works out nicely for us in c sharp all right, so we're on to the last part here. Before we can put it all together, we need to be able to find the priority value of an item. So our character represents an item and it, their priority is indicated by the letter associated with it. So lowercase a to z has priorities one through 26 and capital letters a to z have a priority of 27 to 52. So we're gonna write a, a function now a method that takes in a single character and returns an integer, which happens to be its priority value. 
Some hints here, do not write 52 different if statements. That is a nightmare. You should be able to find a clever solution to do this. You might wanna look into how characters are encoded in a computer. Take a look at ASCII if you need to. Look up ASCII encodings for characters and you should be able to use that to give yourself a nice little trick here. At this point, you should have a function or method get priority that takes in an item as a character and gives you back an integer value, which happens to be the priority as described in our problem description. I've written a little test here to give myself confidence that my solution is working well. And so I've passed in each of these characters, P, capital L, capital P, V, T, S, and I've put down in my print what I believe they should be 16, 38, 42, 22, 20, 19, based on the example and then I verify that when I pass those in here, I get that value back out. So I have confidence, I'm reasonably confident that my get priority method is going to work on a larger program. If you haven't written a test yet, I highly recommend doing it. You can pause and then I'll show you how I came to my solution. So here is my get priority method here. And the way it works is I am taking in a character, I'm gonna return an integer, and I check to see if this character is uppercase first. And if it is, I use the character directly as a number. You can do this in C Sharp. In many languages, you can treat characters as numbers. and You can do math with them. In this case, I know that the characters are ordered. So capital A is one integer before capital B, which is one integer before capital C, etc. So I actually subtract it. I take the character, the item that I want, and I just subtract capital A from it. And then I go ahead and add in 27 to shift it over based on that priority. Similar, if it isn't uppercase in this else section, I take my item and I subtract lowercase a from it, and then I increase it by one, which happens to be the offset there. This is a neat little trick that all programmers, all computer scientists should be aware of that characters are actually encoded as integers. And when we treat it as a character that just says, how should we display this integer in a terminal or into a text area? Fantastic, at this point we should have everything we need to do to go ahead and solve this puzzle. So at this point we need to loop through all of our rucksacks and break it down so that we find the left compartment, the right compartment, find the intersection, find the priority, and then we sum all of those together. So to start out, let's go ahead and take this sample problem, this sample example, and I'm gonna add in a file to my project here. Paste that in, and I'm gonna use that as my test. When I'm done with my program, I should be able to run it and get the output. Hopefully at this point, you've written your program, you've verified it against the sample program, and your total is displaying 157, which is what the example, the sample that they give us in the evident code tells us we should get. So this gives us confidence it's gonna work with our whole input. If yours isn't showing 157 yet, go back, see if you can figure out what's going on, and then come back, I'll show you my solution. So here we are in my code here, and we're going over the entire solution here. I have loaded my file into an array of strings. So this is gonna read in my sample.txt into an array of strings. I'm gonna initialize my total. We start out, our total is zero. And then we're gonna iterate through. I'm using a for each here to iterate through all of the strings. So we're gonna iterate through all of our strings. We're gonna get the first compartment, get the second compartment, find the intersection, get the priority, and then add that in. So we've written all of the steps out that we need to do and now we can just chunk our way through it finally at the end we just displayed the total priority the only thing left to do is to download our puzzle input run it through our program and get our solution 
congratulations you've made it to the end hopefully you've completed part one of day three of the advent of code 2022 as always i hope you learned something i hope you'll continue your coding journey remember to grow learn solve puzzles do it all every day as much as possible if you want to see more advent of code if you want to see the next video go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as it's up as always, have a beautiful day and you're welcome back anytime.